meditations of our hearts. Be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I, I wanted to use this, this poster board as an illustration, and I was practicing this yesterday, and I was about falling out of the pulpit trying to reach different things. So uh, bear with me as I moved it here to the center and hopefully can point to it a little better. Now, we, you, you probably noticed three weeks in a row we've sung the hymn, uh, Lord Who's Love Through Humble Service, and both Pastor Jacobson and I, Sin and I independently had picked out that hymn and then realized, well, this, there, there's a reason for that, and uh, because the hymn, I think, beautifully weaves together th- that, that as Christians, the church, individually and as a group, are called to witness to mercy and to life together. And so the hymn talks about that. I mean, the first thing it says in the first verse, Lord, whose love through humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. See, it's the love of Jesus that we testify to, that we witness to. It's the love of Jesus, the cross, that is the center of our lives, and yet it's through His mercy, His compassion, that He comes, true God and true man, and offers up Himself as a sacrifice so that we might live. So that we might live as one, not separated from God and one another, but we might have life together. Witness, mercy, life together. Well, I was going to go through the hymn and, and point that out in each verse, and then I, after preaching this twice to empty pews last night, I changed it up. So here we go. So this, here's the image, and you've got a cover. Uh, you've got a cover. You do have a cover to most of the bulletins. Hopefully all of them have a cover. There's a color image on the front of your bulletin, so you can take this home with you. You can, uh, you, you can put it up on your, I don't know, on your mirror in your bedroom or something. But I want you to think about this and, and reflect on it because I want this conversation to be ongoing. This, uh, th- these, these three circles, and we took them uh, three separate weeks, witness, mercy, and life together, are not meant to be separate, but they're meant to be woven. They're meant to be interlocking. They're not meant to be separated, but each one builds upon the other. And we started with witness. But what I want you to notice here is that that, that as, we, as we look at this, as we look at our lives as Christians, this is not something that we uh, wrote for ourselves. This is not a story or, or a place that we decided this is what our life should be. This is something that God has done for us. He has put us into his story. And that started back with when we, when we talked about witness and we, and we saw the bold witness of, of John the Baptist who said, I am not the Christ, but he is coming. He said, repent and believe the good news when he comes. It it was the bold witness of the apostles, and you see the, the fire there, the flame and the red color, the bold witness of the apostles who testified to the worst of who they were. You know, it was Peter who, who denied Jesus three times and knows the depth of his sin and humanity's sin, and yet it is Peter and the apostles who at Pentecost and and following that, testify that this is who God is. To testify is to witness, is to confess the hope that we have. It is the red that not only reminds us of fire, but reminds us of the blood of the martyrs. And there's a hint there. Remember the Greek word for witness? It has to do with the blood of the martyrs. Martyreo, yeah, or martyria. To witness is the Greek word is martyria. The martyrs were those early church people and people still today who testified to Jesus even to the point of death. So God brings us into this story and we testify that this is who God is, the God who created all things. This is who God is, the one who even when sin comes and ruins the creation, God says, I will redeem it. And he says that to each of us and at the center of that story, that true story is the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. But not only did did God come and and we testify to who he is and who we are, but also he comes in mercy. We talked about this with diakonia was the Greek word. It means merciful service. We said that the heart of mercy is Jesus' love for us. And, and the, the gospel lesson from that, from that Sunday was from Mark chapter 1, where the leper comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, if you want to, I know you have the power to heal me. And Jesus, it says, having pity on him or having compassion on him, reveals his heart and says, I do. Be, be clean. This mercy that Jesus has shown, that God has shown to his people and has shown to you and me, 
is a mercy that we live out and share with, with others. But when we, when we show mercy to others because we have seen mercy, what are we also doing? Witnessing or testifying that the center of all of this, the source of mercy, is Jesus, our Savior. And then last week, Pastor Jacobson talked about life together. The Greek word, anybody remember the Greek word? Grace, you do, right? Koi. Koinonia. And, and Pastor Jacobson used the word fellowship. The English word fellowship also comes from that. Life together is because of who God is, this God of mercy and love. He has come, and, and even from the fall, and Pastor Jacobson started in Genesis, and Adam and Eve are separated from God and one another. God comes back, and he says, I will bring you back to me. I will offer myself as a sacrifice for your sins so that you might have life together. And life together in the church continues through word and sacrament. We celebrate life together in a very visible way when we gather around the, the, the altar, around this communion rail. We celebrate life together each time a child or a child of God is baptized and connected to Jesus, to his death and resurrection. See, living life together is, as St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it is suffering with those who suffer, and it is rejoicing with those who rejoice. It is showing mercy when someone is hurting, and it is witnessing to the hope that we have as Christians. That's the good news. You see, this picture of witness, mercy, and life together, this true story is one of which God is the author. God the Father who sends His Son, Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit to save us. God is the author, and God holds us together. Fellowship centered in Jesus, Christ-centered and cross-focused. You see, Christ-centered and cross-focused at the center of witness, mercy, and life together. But here is the bad news. Satan hates witness. Satan hates mercy. Satan hates life together. The old Adam, the old Eve, our sinful nature would do anything but keep this witness, mercy, and life together. And notice as you start to pull even one of these circles away, what happens to the full picture? What happens to the center? It's made cloudy, and if you pull them all away, the cross is gone. It is a beautiful thing to live in the center, to be placed in the center by God, to, to confess that we are poor, miserable sinners, and yet to come into God's house together as one body of believers individually members of it, and to hear that you and I are forgiven because of the blood shed by Jesus. It is a beautiful thing. It, Martin Luther calls faith a daring, a joyful daring living here, but, but Satan hates it. Satan says, I don't want you to testify to Christ. Satan says, I don't want you to know mercy or show mercy. Satan says, I don't want you to be together with God or one another. I want you to be alone. And you know what? It doesn't take the sinful nature much help for you or me to find ourselves suddenly ripped apart and Christ-centered and cross-focused is lost. We would be nowhere if God the Father hadn't put us here. If God the Son hadn't come for you and me and died on the cross and rose on the third day. If He didn't reign in heaven, if He didn't give us the church and life together. i got to look at my notes. I don't usually have to. See, God puts us here, but we take ourselves out. We take ourselves out. I mean, Satan encourages us, but we take ourselves out. And, and where there is faith, where there is forgiveness, where there is freedom, it's replaced with doubt and grudge-bearing and captivity. If you take us out of this place or we take ourselves out of the place that is Christ-centered and cross-focused, we move from faith and forgiveness and freedom 
to doubt, grudge-bearing, and captivity. And those are awful, awful things. So now it's been five years and two months, I don't know how many days, more than 1,800 days that, I, that we have been together, that you and I, part of this congregation, that me as a pastor, you as, a, as, as, as people, that, that we have been together, and, and, and boy, I know, <laughs> I know the pain that comes in being separated. I know what happens in the church when, when we lose our witness, when we lose mercy, when we lose life together. It hurts. And we move from a place of faith, and as Martin Luther says, joyful daring, to a place of just regret and fear. Regret and fear. And to, to have regret and fear is awful. To have regret and fear that says, God, have I cut myself off from you? Have I cut myself off from my brothers and sisters? Have I cut myself off from my family? And, and then you come back into this place and you hear, repent. Believe the good news. You and I are baptized, children of the Heavenly Father, connected to Jesus, and God has put us in the center out of mercy and grace so that we can testify to the hope that we have, so that we can show the mercy that we have been shown, so that we can have this life together, this joyful daring, this live by faith. But I know that as a congregation, as a family of believers, we can find ourselves in a position sometimes not living in a joyful daring together, but living and making decisions out of fear. Why are we here? Well, this isn't what I had in mind. Finding ourselves doing the worst of things to the people that we love the most. And yet it's here. Here. The God says, bring it all. In a, in a joyful, daring, repent. Tell the people that you go home with from this service how much you love them. Tell them, please forgive me for those times I have sinned against you and forgive them for when they ask you for forgiveness. And then live out the joy of life together in the body of Christ. With Christ at the center not alone, and every relationship in our life changes. First and foremost, a relationship with our Heavenly Father that says that we are restored, His children, no longer slaves, no longer people who live in fear, but people who are children with an inheritance and a joy. This is the place that you ought to be, feel safe to say, you know what, I don't understand what's happening, let's talk about it to be able to talk to me or Pastor Jacobson as your pastor, to be able to talk about, to one another and say, who are we? And this is a constant reminder. God's Word reminds us that we are people who are called to testify to the hope that we have because of Jesus, to show the mercy that we have been shown in Jesus and to live out life together. Life with a Heavenly Father who's connected us to Him, and life with a God who connects us to one another. This is witness and mercy and life together. Christ-centered, cross-focused, and together. This body of believers assembled in this place because of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our God bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name.